hi and welcome back so in this video we complete the discussion we started in the previous video where we are looking at the relationship between nominal and real interest rate so just a brief recap in the previous video we uh, concluded that the one year real interest rate is basically equals to the one year nominal interest rate adjusted for price and we said we can further simplify uh, this equation to make it look uh, less less intimidating so we said in doing so we're going to do two simple manipulation to make the equation look equation 14.1 look more friendly so we said we do that first by denoting the expected inflation between t and t plus one by expected inflation of t uh, plus one so since bread is the only good the expected rate of inflation equals the expected change in the rent price of bread between this year and next year divided by the rent of price of bread this year so we said this is given by equation uh, 14.2 so this is a it's basically the straightforward definition of of inflation so expected inflation is equal to the expected price minus the current price divided by the current price which is basically what we would probably do when we calculate infl inflation so using equation 14.2 this one and we rewrite the part this part of uh, a pt over expected price in equation uh, 14.1 as 1 divided by 1 plus uh, plus expected inflation and uh, we make replacement in equation 14.1 to get this equation here so equation 14.3 which basically says 1 plus the real interest rate is equals to the ratio of the of, of 1 plus the nominal interest rate divided by 1 plus uh, by expected by expected uh, the rate of inflation so this new equation here equation 14.3 uh, gives us the exact relation of the real interest rate to the nominal uh, interest rate and expected inflation so it basically says one year real interest rate is equals to one year nominal interest rate divided by uh, one year expected inflation or rather the real interest rate payable next year is equals to the ratio between the nominal interest rate payable next year and uh, expected inflation next year okay so as I said, the equation 14.3 gives us the exact relation of the real interest rate and nominal interest rate and expected inflation. However, when, when the nominal interest rate and expected inflation are not too large, say maybe less than, uh, less than 20% as shown here, and an approximate, a close approximate to equation 14.3 is given by this equation equation 14.4 so which basically says tells us that the real interest rate is approximately equals to the nominal interest rate minus expected inflation so this is straightforward so real interest rate is equals to nominal interest rate adjusted for inflation or minus inflation so these are the implications that we we can uh we get from equation 14.4 so first when expected inflation is equal to zero, when uh, this is equal to zero, the nominal interest rate and real interest rate are, are equal. That is, if there's no change in prices, uh, the real interest rate and nominal interest rate will be equal. So two, because expected inflation is typically positive, the real interest rate is typically lower than the nominal interest rate so this is understandable because for for the real interest rate you first have to subtract the positive inflation lastly for a given uh, nominal interest rate the higher the expected rate of inflation the lower the real interest rate this then means that uh, uh, 
inflation depreciates the real interest rate or reduces the uh, real interest rate given nominal interest rate okay so these uh, relations basically emphasize the relationship between real interest rate and nominal interest rate as well as uh, as inflation or expected inflation it also amplifies the importance of adjusting for inflation for inflation so this figure here shows us a practical emphasis of the importance of adjusting for inflation by looking at nominal and real interest rates in South Africa from 1972 to 20, So the nominal interest rate in 1990, around here. So the nominal interest rates represented by the blue line and the real interest rates represented by the, the black line. So the nominal interest rate in 1990 was higher than the, uh, the nominal interest rate in, uh, in 2000 and in 2004 for instance so around here so nominal interest rate here is higher than it is there so these are two different points but the real interest rate was actually higher in 2004 as you can see there uh, than it was in in 90 in 1990 so real interest rate was high in in 2004 than it was in 1990 but nominal interest rate was high in 90 in 1990 than it was in uh, in 2004 so this can be interpreted as or rather we can put it differently as uh, despite the decrease in, in in the inflation rate borrowing was actually more expensive in 2004 than it was in 1990 this is due to the fact that inflation and with its uh expected inflation had steadily declined since 19 uh, the 1980s so this is an emphasis that when uh, considering issues of nominal and real interest rate it is very important to always adjust for for inflation deflation is also not a very good aspect so we are going to use this uh, this output of uh, the United States economy during the Great Depression to look at the evolution of nominal and real interest rate and the dangers of deflation. So after the collapse of the share market in 1929, the United States economy plunged into an economic depression, as you can see, as uh, the first two columns of Table 1 show. So um, the unemployment rate uh, increased from Two point uh three point two percent in nineteen twenty nine to uh twenty four point nine percent by nineteen uh nineteen thirty three, and output growth was strongly negative for four years, four years in a row as you can see uh one two three uh, and four. So from nineteen thirty three up onwards the economy recovered uh slowly, but by nineteen forty the unemployment rate was uh still very 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 high so as you can see from the table the federal government in the united states decreased the nominal interest rate although it uh, it did this very slow the nominal interest rate decreased from uh 5.3 percent in 1929 to 2.6 percent by by 1933 at the same time as shown in the in this column here in column four the decline in output and the increase in unemployment led to a sharp decrease in in inflation so inflation is uh, e equals to uh, zero in in 1920 in 1929 turned negative in by 1930 negative 2.5 and um, and reaching ten point a negative ten point eight by nineteen thirty nineteen thirty two as shown in the So if we make an assumption that expected inflation was equal to actual uh, deflation in in each year, we can construct a series for for real interest rate. So this is done in uh, in the last column here, as you can see, one year real interest rate. 
it gives a hint for why output continues to decline until 1990 until 1933 so the real interest uh, rate reached 12.3% in 1931 and 14.8% by 1932 and still a very and still very very high 7.8% in uh, in 1933 even though it was now declining it is no great surprise that at uh, at those interest rates both consumption and investment demand remained very low and the depression got uh, got worse so in 1933, the economy seemed to be in a deflation trap, as uh, as shown by the negative uh, negative signs in the inflation. So the low activity led to even more deflation, as well as the higher real interest rate uh, led to lower spending and so on. So starting in 1934, however, Deflation gave way to inflation, leading to a large decrease in the real interest rate and the economy began to recover, as you can see from, 19, uh, from 1930, 1933, shown in the, in the table. So the question to ask is that why, despite a very high unemployment rate, the U.S. economy was able to avoid further and further de deflation? So the answer to this remains ho hostly uh, debat a debatable issue amongst economists. Some point to a change in monetary policy, a very large increase in, uh, in the money supply, leading to a change in inflation expectations. Others pointed to the policies of the, of the New Deal, in particular uh, the establishment of a minimum wage and therefore limiting further wage decreases. Whatever the reason was, this was a was the end of the deflation trap, and the the economy began to began to recover. So this shows then why is that deflation very bad for for interest rate and the economy as well. All right, so we're going to end here for this session, and in the next video we'll start looking at the the nominal and real interest rate and the ISLM LM model. All right, thank you.